so we are a painted rose and we are here with the Giannu system and we are playing 20 questions with two systems today. I'm excited so. <laughs> two systems, 20 questions, and tons of chaos. Yes! That's it! That is 100% it. <laughs> come and fly away with me. Come, come and fly away with me. So speaking of chaos, our first question is which of your altars met each other first? Ah. Uh, so for us, it was me, Jenna, and E, like, so E was the first one I met and she was a big surprise. But when I met her, she kept talking about the little girl mm. and him who locked her away. And I was like, I'm just gonna pretend that those nonsense words are not saying like I don't know what that means da, 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 da. Um, so clearly she knew Lil mm -hmm. and Jen and like was talking about them but they didn't have the name yet that was just the little girl was what anyone called her and she chose a name later but the first one I met was E. Okay so for us it officially when we started to kind of figure out the DID, it was Daniel. And someone had literally asked us, like, have you heard of DID? We were dealing with like the memory loss and, and the amnesia and, and gaps in time, but we didn't quite expect or suspect DID because we didn't really know too right. much about it. Right. And the representation that we had seen was either of systems that were very comfortable with their diagnosis and knew what was going on or representation that was really kind of awful. Um, yeah. Kind yeah. of is putting it nicely. And so when someone said, have you heard of DID? Immediately I went, I think I would know. <laughs> and in the background, I hear Daniel going, but would you though? And I was like, oh. What was that? Uh, mini panic immediately. Um, but before that, I mean, as early as middle school and even well into childhood, looking back on it, there were times that I didn't realize that dreams or I didn't know how imaginary friends worked. I didn't understand that normal people's, well, neurotypical people's Imaginary friends couldn't talk back and it didn't quite work that way. Did some of you suspect things earlier than others? Like, I know I, growing up, thought Daniel was a ghost. Like, I didn't know what was going on. I just felt like this presence of somebody. And I had kind of even, like, growing up, kind of reached out and been like, what are you? Are you some sort of spirit? Or and he was like, I don't remember some like a past life or something, so I don't think so. But I'm just here. I don't know. Maybe like would ghosts know that they're ghosts? And didn't really know how to explain that other than that he was here. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we had an explanation that was DID, but I think some of us definitely knew that there were others around. Was that similar for you guys? So he knew about others. Okay. Um, but I had no awareness of E, so mm -hmm. like I had zero awareness of the others until he was able to like break through the barriers to talk to me. Sure. Um, I had dreams, like dreams where there were like four of me at a table discussing things. And, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because I journal and, and some of the dreams were really vivid, like I'd write them down. So like I can look back in my journal and see lots of dreams where like it's different aspects of me and going, oh, uh-huh, that's, you know, my subconscious yelling it at me. But um, I had zero awareness until um, E knew there were others. Mm. And I don't know, like she understood it was DID, she just knew yeah. that there were others with her. Okay. Well, and I think that's so interesting because like the brain does really just find any explanation that isn't like 
Mm-hmm. You know, like this it'll chalk it up to anything. Like, oh, a dream about multiple altars. Like, huh, that's a strange sign from the universe. Or, or like, oh yes, that's not how everybody's inner monologue works. We told ourselves for much longer than we should have. Like, oh yeah, everybody's inner dialogue. Do you mean monologue? No. Don't you? <laughs> oh yeah. No, my, my favorite, and I remember this in elementary school, hearing adults make the joke, it's okay, everyone talks to themselves, it's only when you answer yourself that there's a problem. And I was like, Yes! And I was like, y'all don't answer yourself? Like, why would you just leave it hanging? Like, right? Yeah, right? Like, no, like, absolutely. But also, like, sometimes people will be like, oh, but it's normal to have, like, an inner conversation and things. Mm-hmm. I felt yeah. like I felt like finding Nemo, it's, where it's just like, are you my conscience? Like completely. <laughs> I was convinced that yeah. that was just like, okay, shoulder angel or whatever, you know. Yeah. Any explanation that was not my brain is is you know doing something that mm-hmm. not everybody does was a sufficient excuse to keep me in the dark for a while oh, absolutely. longer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I actually have people who like drop into my DMs and asking because it's like the would you and someone recently was like, so your alters, like how do you tell them apart from like just thoughts? Also, can you feel yes. where they are in relationship to you? And I was like, mm, yes. Yes. And like sometimes I've noticed when we're communicating, sometimes we'll look over like to where they are internally and it's not that we see them over in the room like oh yes they're standing over there at least for us right i know some systems are different and operate differently but for us it's not so much like oh yeah they're sitting over in that chair it's a internally in the inner world or in our headspace Mm -hmm. they're located in this general area so if i'm looking here it makes sense yep originally when we had written that question i i think we had meant which of our altars met each other oh. first when we met in person for the first yes. time. Um, <laughs> let me see. But I love the, the, the interpretation that, that you went with as well. I was like, I'm just going to go with this because I like this question too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I think you know it was who, Lily who was okay. out for us. Um, and I'm trying to remember who was out for y'all. So I was at the meet and greet mm-hmm. and... I think we were a bit co-conscious. Um, it's mostly Jay right now, by the way, but de- Blue was definitely around. And then Callie quickly fronted at one point mm. as well. I was very excited to meet y'all. Um, and she was very excited to meet Bill yeah. uh, because we had communicated online a few times. But I think for the initial meet and greet, it was mostly me, Callie was a little bit co-conscious, and then toward like the gala portion, I think it was mostly me and Blue. Um, that first met, yeah, yeah. It, it was a great time. I really love it. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I think also, like, one of our first words to you guys was, we're a blurry mess, because we weren't really sure at the time either. Yes. <laughs> Looking back on it. But speaking of meeting each other in dreams, mm-hmm. do you guys ever switch while dreaming? So not frequently, but it's a really weird feeling. So the first time that it happened, I was the active dreamer. And usually for us, whoever is fronting when we sleep is the one who is actively dreaming. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we sometimes can remember each other's dreams, but it's Mm -hmm. it's weird. Um, But I was actively dreaming and it felt like I was snatched up and pulled like... (sighs) Oh wow. Yeah. And then the dream changes and I I forget who was the active dreamer, but like it was a very different dream. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so woke up in the morning and was like, okay, whoever switched in was then in the front and was just like that was a really weird experience. No, totally. It would I imagine be very jarring. Mm Mm-hmm. Like for us, I'm it's hard to say if we've switched while dreaming. We've definitely had dreams from each other's perspectives. Yes. Or had dreams where it's a third party, like, we always used to call them movie dreams. And like, even now, sometimes we'll have dreams where I don't think it's any of us necessarily, but it's just like watching a story. It's like a third person, mm-hmm. person you know, kind of thing. Or, or like a first person view. Oh, 
<laughs> Very much. You mean not everybody has memories from across the room from themselves? I don't That's know, not how you recall things? I was thinking about that. I was doing something and I was like, but see, I should be remembering that because how would I remember it from here when I was ex Like I was in this part of the room, why am I watching myself in this part of the right, room from across right, the room? I'm trying to figure that out and it's like the, the meme with the lady and the math equation in the background. And I was like, hmm, something isn't adding up here. Yes. I don't know what, but something. Literally. Well, and like for us, like I said, I don't know that we've switched during a dream, but like, yeah, we, we've definitely had times where we've woken up and then looked back because we keep a dream journal sometimes. Excellent, yeah. And like, there are definitely dream journal entries that are like, I don't remember that at all. Mm -hmm. And then for a long time, um, again, the denial. How denial is built into this disorder so often. It, it's did did denial. It's <laughs> the denial. <laughs> but yes, like it's such a thing. It is. Is there were so many times I'm like, oh, I just must have been really sleepy while writing that entire novel of a dream in perfect detail. And then the back of my brain, it's like, nope, I don't remember that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. or telling someone about the dream that I found written and then them being like, we already had this entire conversation. Oh, okay, cool. Good mm -hmm. to know. Good mm -hmm. to know. I will swear up and down that our, our amnesia is not that bad until I have a conversation <laughs> about a conversation that has already happened with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny to me is like, it has happened probably 90% of the time. I've met someone who's like, mm, I believe I'm an OSDD system because I don't have amnesia. Like 90% of the time, they just haven't. Don't know that they yes, have the amnesia. They, they haven't encountered the amnesia for whoever the host is or whoever it is saying it at the moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, I think we've even witnessed some of that with y'all. I've been like, mm, you don't have amnesia. Oh, I'm sorry, that what? <laughs> right. Wait, who was that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We did what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so like, you know, the the brain is really good at hiding things yes. from people. So like, no, I don't have any any Yes, I I I've realized I do have alters, but I don't have amnesia. Mm. Yeah. A couple years later, oh man, the amnesia is so bad. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't remember what I had for breakfast, like everybody regularly. I also don't remember half the day. Well, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> we don't talk about like how much yeah. you remember, so you don't realize like, oh wait, not remembering like that that's not horrible. That kind of not remembering is I like I remember I had someone who was like, I don't have amnesia being like, Well, I, I vaguely remember my week. Like I kinda I know what I did. Yeah. And I was like, mm, that is not my place to tell. No! <laughs> Like, I'm gonna tell them. Don't. Yeah. I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't do it. Like, I don't know. Just like lay, lay some information around. Like, oh, hey, have you ever watched like, this video on like dissociative amnesia? I don't know. Why is it purple? Right, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen that video. And the link is purple. Mm -hmm. Or the YouTube thing says you've like watched this much. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I literally, before getting diagnosed, didn't know that my computer wasn't just glitching because I would look things up on DID and see that links were purple or I would look up YouTube videos and see they were like partly watched. And I was like, did somebody hack my YouTube? Or I would go up to people and be like, you know that weird thing that YouTube does when it says you've already watched a video that you know you haven't watched? Or like when you go to look up something on Google and the link is purple and you're like, I've never seen this link before. Mm -hmm. My friends were like, that literally never happens. What it's are you talking thing. about? Yeah, it's like, like genuinely, we we are we have amnesia, <laughs> but it's low. Like, yeah. especially when compared with some other systems, it is low amnesia, but still, we still have the, like, what's funny is, like, when I'm out with Jonathan, he'll know how to rescue me when, like, someone comes up and is talking to me, and they clearly know me, and I have no memory of this person. 
And so Jonathan will be like, oh, hey, insert name of person. It's good to see you again. I'm like, oh, thank you. That's at least their name. I have this information. Yes. Yeah. It's totally a segue from our, our original question here. But like, I have literally had people come up to me and address me by name and ask me how my family is doing. Yes, and you know, such detailed information. Yeah. And I like, I had a neighbor come up to me and she was like, hey, how is your family? How's your brother doing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I sat there nodding and saying, mm -hmm. thank you. And she left and I was like, what's that? Uh, yeah. Like, there she goes, okay. And I, I still to this day don't know who that person was. And then you feel like guilty. Yes, like, clearly somebody knew her well. <laughs> right? Well, and on the topic of dreams as well, our, mm -hmm. our follow-up question too was, do some of you dream differently from mm -hmm. each other? And it sounds like you kind of answered that question Very already. differently. So like, he usually dreams of being in school, which are never, mm -hmm. like I've heard people like, oh, you know that dream when you're in school? I never had dreams where I was really? like, never. Oh, I get that one all mm -hmm. of the time. I don't know if it's true for, for others in the system, but awesome. Yeah, like I never had that one. E, that's usually the dream that she has. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but our, our dreams have very, very different flavors to yeah. them. Yeah. Um, they're really distinct. So it's like, not only is it obvious who's dreaming, but sometimes it's obvious from like, I don't remember the dream, but I remember it was a, we tend to dream vividly. Like I remember it was a vivid dream, and I don't remember the dream. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, when Zebby out last night, he probably, because I usually don't remember his dreams. The subconscious oh, is like not for oh. you. Mm hmm Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, poor Zebby. Just wanna give him a hug. <laughs> yeah, no, he will remember the dream if he comes mm -hmm. back at it, but me, no. I'll okay. be like, we had loud dreams. I know yeah. we did. I don't know what they were. So I can't tell you the flavor of his dreams, yeah. but I, I know that they're different. Yes, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for us, I think there is too much amnesia in between like the dreams themselves to say, but our dreams from each other are like, like not from each other as individuals, but individual dreams are very different from yeah. each other. And we have some wild dreams. I cannot mm -hmm. even begin. A, a therapist would have a field day interpreting <laughs> our dreams. We've had some weird ones. That could be a, a video in itself. We'll spare you all the details. If you wanna know about the weird dreams that we've had and just psychoanalyze some of the right. weirdest dreams we've had, we'll, we'll make a separate video for that one. Although I will say some authors are more conscious of the fact that we are dreaming when we're mm, dreaming, yes. like by far. I think some of us are better at lucid dreaming than others, which yeah. is always fun when it happens, but like we're not always great at knowing how to, just kind of sometimes we wake up and, and realize we're dreaming. Yes. What hobbies do you, several or even most of your alters share? Uh, so sharing, I haven't found one of us yet who doesn't write hmm. really in some way. Of course. Like, we're very, if, if they're old enough to make words, they have an interest in, in the writing. So we're all writers. Um, most of us forage. Um, Anthony uh, will will enjoy it from the porch. He, he doesn't, he's not so into dirt. Oh, um, into the foraging? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like he can respect it, but he's not gonna do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And you all, because I, I love this question. I, I absolutely love foraging. I think there's some of us that know more than others with that. For us, in terms of hobbies, I think it, it makes sense when you say writing. Also, if y'all don't know, the Gianni system also are amazing authors. They have several books out. Please go check them out um, if you haven't already. But I think for us, like similarly, things that the, the body does for career, like jobs, we all have to know how to do. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some of us more interested in them yes. than others, but makeup was a huge interest for like shared interest for most of us. And then those of us that aren't as excited about makeup, Daniel is not usually the one to be like, oh my gosh, excited for makeup, you know? But like, even he has found ways to express himself that make 
am more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And D and D and role play and creative outlets in general are ways that we feel comfortable. And I think that was a huge thing for us, and re a reason that we found the comfort in TikTok through quarantine is because we got to create like these characters or these stories and each of us could express little pieces of ourselves yeah. without actually opening up fully and being like, hey, here we are, um, in a way that felt more manageable and felt safe and felt like we could step away from it at the end of the day or not be tied to it completely, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Definitely. Um, though our characters are completely separate from our alters and who we are as yes. individuals. So that was complicated for our system, especially because during quarantine we had a character actually that shared the same name that we named Daniel, completely separate from who he is as an alter. Yes. Well, and 100% as a writer, one of my characters is named Jonathan. And I have to tell people this is not based on my husband <laughs> at all. At all. Yeah. Like, if anything, that is probably the character most like myself in the book. Oh, yeah. But I just, I thought it was an appropriate name for the character. You know, people make certain associations with certain names. And, and but like, not not this person. So when you're like, yeah. yes, Daniel, but not not my Daniel. Yeah, no. That, yes, well, that tracks. And this is something that we wanted to talk about, but not quite known how, mm -hmm. is that character is kind of what bridged some of our communication with mm. Daniel is because we were making videos and writing stories and, and writing paragraphs for things that we didn't remember writing. Mm. And mm -hmm. it started to feel like I was co-authoring something with somebody, but I didn't exactly remember those gaps and, and where this was coming from. And so I thought I was having all of these memory problems, but really, he really resonated with this character and interestingly enough he didn't really have a name prior to that he was just kind of the the boy this this guy in yeah. our brain and interestingly enough we talked to our mom about it later and she said that sometimes i would come up to her and ask her you know if, if i was ever like born a boy what would you have named me mm -hmm. and she gave a few ideas that all sort of both started with d and neither of them quite fit and then this name just kind of fit and stuck and he was like i that's that is my name actually yeah now what <laughs> like this has already been taken uh like that's not me what do i do so yeah, that was kind of what broke down some of the communication between us. Well, and I like that, you know, you're like, he was the little boy where I was talking yeah. about Lil was the little girl that he was like, you know, the, the little mm -hmm. girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you said um, with the writing, mm -hmm. are there alters that have difficulty with like forming words, language, things like that? Uh, yeah. So, and actually when we first started doing videos, it was because Jen was not white mute mm. but speaking was very very hard and so oh. we were like well if you speak to the camera yeah is that going to be an easier way to get those words out and it was and so then we're like okay well why don't you then tell us the things that you can't say to the camera so it became like our first mode of communicating i feel like there are some of us that are better at typing or writing things than mm -hmm. others and, and there's different ways of communication that are just more comfortable so totally tracks yeah and that kind of ties into my next question mm. which was do any of you have hobbies that differ from each other that like only a few of you like yes well on this one not necessarily that only a few of us like but only Lil can really draw oh okay so like I would love to draw I have always wanted to be able to draw um but I I manage stick figures <laughs> and that's like like even my stick figures are not like the good stick figures you sure. know been like no they're, they're very much like um yeah. and Lil can really draw um and so that's just 
a thing that she she does and she has. E is into fashion. Um, e and Anthony, they have very different fashion senses, but they're both yeah. into fashion and an aesthetic, uh, which is something that I am very not good at. Like, um, <laughs> like I think you sell yourself short. Well, I have see, not seen it. I mean, I know y'all have influence in choosing the outfits, but I've not seen a bad outfit yet. Like, <laughs> I, let me tell you, when I got married, I would put on an outfit and Jonathan would be like, that doesn't actually match. Well, I mean, like right. multiple patterns. Oh no, like, okay. it, was, it was very not like, <laughs> and I would wear things several sizes too big because trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I am not an embodied person. So, um, like, it took a lot of learning to, to put together, like, oh, okay, this is how to, like, oh, okay, clothes can go together this way and colors can go together this way. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's something that has been, like, learned and, and curated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, I definitely relate to the drawing. Um, I mean, like I said, all of us kind of share artistic mm -hmm. expressions, but I think we gravitate towards specific methods of self-expression yes. that differ between us. Like Lo really loves digital art. She really likes drawing and she's really good at it, but she has more of a kind of realistic style. Whereas some of us have like more of a cartoony style and we've noticed like different art styles across the board. Mm -hmm. And then we learned through actively working on a crochet project that not all of us know how to crochet. We got a video of us like mid crochet project where Callie switched out and was like, what? what is this in front we know how to crochet especially because she hadn't fronted for a while and somehow just missed that entirely yeah and didn't realize that we knew how to crochet we were yeah. like halfway through a project and she's just sitting there going what what are we making what even is this and it was like half of a sweater and she's like how is this a sweater like <laughs> i feel like i should get my crochet project in to michelle and brad on this <laughs> I'm so glad you guys like it. Magic. <laughs> so uh, for the Gianni system, we um, our symbol is a dragon. It's a whole thing about a dream we had. So they uh, crocheted and it's a cat. Yes, I can link the pattern down below that we followed because there is an awesome YouTube artist that creates these dragon crochet hats. But I saw this pattern and it was too perfect for the Gianni mm -hmm. system. Um, I'm so glad you guys like it. It's incredible, <laughs> honestly. Y'all should be leaving in the comments like, hype them up. <laughs> so this next question is somewhat for like non-hosts, which both of us mm -hmm. kind of have the hosts out right now. Mm -hmm. So, but if you guys can answer or speak to this, yeah. what was some of the because for the host, it's often a similar or adjacent experience of, what do you mean I have this? Because DID can often be built to be a very hidden disorder. Mm -hmm. Even in overt systems, it's often hidden yeah. from the host or some of the alters that have it because it's supposed to protect the person going through the things. Mm -hmm. um, so for those of you that were not actively hosts at the time. What was your reaction to the diagnosis? So, my favorite re reaction was Lil's because it was very 13 going on 30, if you've seen that movie. She found herself suddenly an adult and she was like, wait, so we're married? Oh my goodness. She was excited about this. We have a dog. We have a cat. We are writers. Like, she, it did not matter to her that we are chronically ill. It, yeah. Nothing else, like, for her, all her dreams had been realized. Like, she went from a childhood that was not the most ideal for us yeah. to having all her dreams come true. Aww. And she was just 
excited and she would front with this excited happy energy and it helped me look at our life differently because here I am like you know chronically ill and having you know these type of struggles and just yeah. being like am I really even like you know what am I contributing to society and Lil's just like this is the best thing ever right that is so precious oh my gosh Lil is like after my own heart like she's the sweetest oh my gosh <laughs> like protect at all costs right like. <laughs> right that is that's also how the system feels and especially because she's the most like extroverted of us she's like oh hey friend and this and they're like maybe you should be a little more cautious about that it's fine but also i think all of those things are absolutely things to celebrate like that's wonderful how about y'all see it was different for different alters in the mm -hmm. system yes so it depends on who you ask and of the opinions that i know because there's some alters that i have better communication with than others mm -hmm. so some of us i'm not entirely sure but for like for Lo, for example, it was actually really hard for her because she was aware that what she saw in the mirror did not reflect what she looked like internally, but she didn't know that there was a host that did identify with the body. She right. didn't know that any of us identified with the body and she didn't know that there were multiple of us. And I think she actually was the host at one point in our life. And so for her, it was waking up to realizing we're no longer like in middle school, high school, you know, that time of our life, we aren't a child anymore. And somebody else who looks more like what we see in the mirror has been living their life and has this claim that some may feel more valid than like her own position in her life and so it like we didn't she did not get along with the hosts for a while i think there was this resentment and this confusion over who are you and and where have i been and where have you been and you've just been here well i haven't mm -hmm. and why do you get to be the one that's here when i'm yes not? yes and we had all of those same questions and no answers for her we were just like i i'm just here and not even of the host or co-hosts that those of us that do identify with the body or we're fronting the most it was hard for us to answer that and also we don't look exactly like the body internally we look more adjacent to what we look like currently but even we get deal with dysphoria or dysmorphia or issues with not quite matching up what we feel inside but it's different for Lo, who looks completely different. And for her, again, she was just thinking that it was a form of dysmorphia or, or confusion with what she looked like internally and that anyone could experience those things. Yeah. So waking up to everything was like an entirely different experience. So do each of you guys have a favorite place or places in the inner world? Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, we are very particular about our places in the inner world. Caleb has a, a really particular place. We have a, a forest in our inner world, and he has a very particular place in our forest uh, that he likes. As does Debbie. It's a different, like, mm -hmm. different places. Anthony, um, one of the first times I ever had access to the inner world, mm -hmm. uh, at that place, we all had, at that time, we all had separate houses um, because now they, they all like, and it just happened, like we didn't try, but are merged into one. But, um, so like Lil had a tree house and, um, and there's still a tree house in the inner world, but it's not like a house so much as it is now a place to play. Beside mm -hmm. the point, um, Anthony's house was just glass windows mm -hmm. and, um, very distinct modern decorations like black and white themed like sure. everything and um so his room in our house is still that very distinct decoration and he's like about it like this is his space yeah okay How yeah y'all honestly similar um but 
So in our inner world, we have like an entire, it's like an entire city or network of areas. Mm -hmm. um, like there's a subway station and there are multiple subway stations. Like there's a subway system and um, it's almost like a town and some of it's reminiscent of the places we grew up and some of it's reminiscent of places that our family is from. And, and I think it's taken different experiences that have melded the, and shaped the like map of our inner world. But there's this central kind of location that's a giant house and almost every altar has their own room in that house. Yes. Um, and some of us occupy that house more than others, but everybody has like their own room and then the little kind of have a room that they share. Yeah. Um, but they also have like this cabin. We also have wood, which is interesting, but they have this cabin that they can like kind of retreat to. And there's an altar that has like a garden mm -hmm. that she kind of takes care of. And she tends to take care of the littles as well. So if they're not able to be around things that are happening in like that main house that are more adult conversations and topics and things, she can kind of whisk them away. Um, we also have, I have an interesting time with things because I don't have the most access to the inner world. And it's taken me a lot of like internal processing and working with parts to figure out our inner world. But I've had dreams of that since childhood and didn't realize that that's what I was dreaming of. I was like, mom, can we go back to this place? She's like, that doesn't exist. What are you, where, where are you, what? You went where and when, with who? Well, did we know? But um, yeah, we each kind of have our own rooms, but there's some altars rooms that I've never seen the insides of mm -hmm. because they're like, excuse me, this is my space. Heck no, yes. not even no, but heck yes. no. Um, and there's also a basement that I have very little access to. Yes. I have no idea yes. what is there. The basement has restricted access in our house yeah. as well. Which is interesting, I've heard is can be a semi-common thing for systems to have areas that are kind of locked off, which makes sense when you think of the nature of how DID works and is built to protect from traumas. It would make sense that there are altars that don't have access to certain spaces and places yes. within the brain. Um, I but, was dreaming that there were monsters in the basement of my house mm -hmm. for years before I learned about the trauma that J.A. Mm -hmm. held. I was dreaming of monsters in the basement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like for us, I know that like, I think it's some things that don't make sense to us or like um, don't follow certain laws of reality, like kind of thing, just exist in the, like, I don't know that the laws of physics apply to the basement. Like, I don't even know right, right down right. there. But um, for me, at least, my kind of favorite space in the inner world that I can almost always access when I have access to the inner world mm -hmm. yeah. is like in the main house, there's like a living room and there's like a big screen TV and a computer and this big long couch. And behind that couch is like this little tiny hallway that like leads to this little like pillow and toy area that's like kind of for the littles, but it's just like this little cozy space. Yeah. And anytime one of us, well, at least I or the littles or some of like a few of us that can access that space, if we feel unsafe or uncomfortable and need to retreat, that is just like a cozy space within the inner world that we can feel safe and just like, yeah. Um, and like, I've always had that, even before I knew that that was the inner world that I was accessing. So it feels like this nostalgic sense of familiarity. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is where that place was. This is where that existed, kind of thing. Yes, I found it. Yeah, exactly. So then for our last question, we have kind of a, a just fun non-DID related question, although I guess it could be somewhat DID related considering the fact that it may be different answers for multiple on, uh, altars or very likely will be different yes. answers for multiple <laughs> altars as I'm thinking of this question for us. But what is your favorite kind of tea or just drink, warm drink in general? Like, so what's your go-to? Yes, we're huge tea drinkers. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, same. <laughs> and um, y'all should see their tea closet. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, and I didn't understand early on, and this was mm-hmm. like one of the things where you're like, oh, that was a symptom. Oh, <laughs> like. Tea is a symptom. <laughs> right. Well, see, we, we were like really poor when we first got married, but I didn't feel it so long as I had a variety of teas to choose from because I never knew which mood I was going to be in. Oh, so much. We don't have favorite colors because, mm-hmm. oh, it depends on my mood. It depends yeah. on the day. It depends on my headspace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so, like, so long as I had a variety of teas, I, it didn't matter. And so, mm-hmm. um, so... Me personally, um, I I love rooibos. That's my favorite base. And then, uh, depending on the weather or um, my health, or you know, like whether I want to be more alert or more sleepy, I will add in things that are like so lavender. And I'm just like, oh, kind of, you know, be more mellow. Or mint if I want to be more like oh, alert. Um, but like Anthony has a signature tea. Mm-hmm. I suppose it's a tea. I don't know. M- my dude likes a, a stick of cinnamon, a couple cloves, and a a dash of lemon juice Ooh. with the hot water and then honey. Ooh, and that okay. is his thing. Like, yeah. Forget any. I have so many teas in this tea. No, no. Give me the stick of cinnamon, couple cloves dash of honey and the hot mm. water. Like, well, a dash of lemon, honey, and hot water. That's it's it. It's like the tea version of the dash of Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so, um, I, can, I can speak to those two favorites easily. I probably need the others to be out to be like, yeah, you know, have that's a favorite fair. tea. Mm-hmm. But I know, I know we need the variety, so they yeah. do definitely have preferences that differ from mine. Yeah. I, I can completely agree with that. Um, one of my favorites, personally, is mint. Mm-hmm. I think that it's so great. Like the, the the fact that it is both cold and hot at the same time makes my brain sparkle in a specific kind of way. I don't know how to explain that. Like it just it's just like it's two things that shouldn't work together, and somehow it does, and that feels magical. Um, but I also love trying new things. Like I mean, this tea currently is a spicy hibiscus and it has cocoa nibs and there was yes there's uh, so in the spice there's like um some cracked red pepper to bring like the the spiciness to ah, the front mm-hmm. okay yep yeah and it's fantastic um but I know some of us really like matcha. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Lily's in the back right now, being like, yeah. I like rose. Like, so. I love rose teas. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think anything with roses, we, we tend to gravitate towards because, like, our, our middle name is Rose. How we got the, a painted rose. Yeah! yeah. Hey. So, and like, when we told our therapist that, she was like, you see it, right? Like, yeah, I don't need to point it out to you because the way we got the name A Painted Rose was like painting the roses red from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. So, yes. like, oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we love rose teas. At least one of us really likes lavender tea. Mm-hmm. Um, and we like like kind of those floral, floral um, earthy tones. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it really does depend on the day, and I don't know if we've taken a tally. Now I'm like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna take group votes or, or see who yeah. everybody's favorite tea is. I'm sitting here like, going, who was that when we had the the dandelion and the um, chicory root? That was J A. Um, um, robust, yeah, like, bitter, like mm-hmm. coffee adjacent tea drink. That was J A. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it. it it's like it depends, but the mm-hmm. things that you don't necessarily think about day to day, it's hard to kind of chalk it up to like, okay, this is my favorite. And yeah. when there's like a mix of altars around, it's going to be different as well. So I think that's my favorite part about teas sometimes. It's so customizable that you're like, okay, today yes. is, this is the vibe. Am I blending? Right. That's fine. So is my tea. Very much so. <laughs> but. With that, I think the tea is getting cold, and this has been 
quite a fun video yeah. experience and it's been cool just chit chatting even getting off topic it's yes. always fun to talk to y'all so i'm so glad we got to do this but for now we will say bye to you guys and if you are interested in seeing more of either of our channels i will leave links below and if you're interested in seeing more two systems 20 questions and a whole lot of chaos i will yes. possibly link a part <laughs> two and we will have 10 more questions for you since this video is getting a little lengthy and we both need to sleep at some point tonight, regardless of good conversations, tea, and wonderful fires keeping yeah. us up. Yeah. So we will let you guys get going and we will see you in the next one. <laughs> oh, and that's fine because this is where you cut. And then in the end, you just put the blooper yes. reel. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, there will probably mm -hmm. be a few bloopers, bloopers but that's so okay. Far. <laughs> and also like um my brain is like pushing through um i don't i lost that sentence as i was going through it um gosh did problem right the did be like no for real mid-sentence it was just like wait where was that train going i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes literally i will be in the middle of a sentence and it's like mm, are we gonna say this sentence yet and it poofs away yes the, the snatch and grab of like mm -hmm. yes and then if you try too hard to grab it back like it just makes the association yeah worse. you're just now floating you're like oh Very am, much I, so. am i a real thing what is reality what is existence these aren't my hands like that's what you get for trying to snatch it back <laughs> i'm so glad that like talking to other systems can be so comforting sometimes because that is such a relatable experience that many people i've talked to have been like i'm sorry what <laughs> or they'll be like oh yeah you mean like this i'm like not quite i mean like this and they're like not quite